Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to talk about a number of topics that um, are really important relating to uh, the challenges in exposing the fraud about Abu Dhabi 2021. As many of you are aware, this channel has been purposely set up to expose that fraud. Uh, I want to say thank you to everybody who has recently subscribed to the channel uh, and I also pass on once again my thanks to those of you that have been with the channel for a long period of time. I need to expose the dynamics of, of what it is that are presenting challenges. So, for example, this is my analytics page on the channel. It says, keep it up, your channel has got 511% more views than usual in the last 28 days. So I've been going for over a year and a half. Why we've now got 511% more than what is normal I don't know. I put that video out, uh, which is an hour and 45 minutes long, about um, exposing what was said, and that seems to have brought a lot more people to the channel. Now, we know that long videos don't usually attract that many people. Usually, people have got a 10-minute attention span, and it's the shorter videos that are the ones that people click on. So how come that went big? I don't know. Um, I do shorter videos. They don't seem to get many views. I don't know how it works. Now, if we look, little kind of graphical tools that um, YouTube provides. So here, 24,000 views in the last 48 hours. Now, look at look at what happens. You, you release something and then you get a drop off. OK, you know, this is the sort of thing. You, the, the number of views, you, you release a video, you get some some views for a period of time and then it just drops off down to nothing. And then if you don't release anything, your channel just seems to drop die it dries up okay so as a person trying to make content it seems as though you need to continually make content to keep audience engagement otherwise what happens you actually end up losing subscribers i've lost six or seven subscribers in a day on some occasions and you wonder do people actively cancel their subscription to a, a youtube channel because i can't remember well there's one or two that i've actually gone now this is a load of crap and clicked unsubscribe to um, but mostly I don't I don't do that now again what you can see here is in the last 28 days 1.6 thousand subscribers okay which is a thousand and a half more than usual okay it says it there more than usual right estimated revenue 490 quid okay that doesn't give us a figure more than usual but trust me that's significantly more than usual a normal month would be around about 20 to 40 quid has been normal i've had the odd month where it's been 100 quid or 120 quid this is unheard of okay um and watch time again look at that 24.7 thousand hours more than usual uh, 114,000 uh, views more than usual and you can see the graph there as to what it's doing all right but within that has come different problems as well let me just switch, switch to a different tab so this is uh, a list of my videos and you can see here the videos that I've put out reason, recently the thing that kicked it off was the one down here at the bottom of the list, the BBC chief exposes the Abu Dhabi fraud. OK, and that's now up to 84,700 views. And that has brought with it a lot more exposure to the channel. A lot more people have watched that video and are now able to clearly see what was being done to us all through Abu Dhabi 2021. OK. I've since released other videos and I did this one about Nicholas Latifi showing the onboards and the fact that when he crashed, he made no attempt whatsoever to see if it was possible to move that car. Didn't appear to try to select a forward gear or a reverse gear to see if it was capable, if it was possible to even manoeuvre that car to see if it was possible to recover that car to the pits. That in itself is strange. Now, <laughs> that got 7,300 views. 84,000 people. Again, well, we'll go, let's, let's just show you this one. Okay, If I click onto that one, and I need to go to the analytics section of this. Hopefully I can find it. 
without having to now I might need to go to the anal analytic sides of this two seconds I'll go back um, wait there this is the screen I want you to see so uh, BBC chief exposes Hamilton robbed by 2021 but so this is the video and if you look at this graph here it shows you the number of people this is we start off with the number of people that have clicked to watch the video and by three minutes there's only 43 percent of them still watching <laughs> right by 12 minutes there's only a quarter of them left watching the video and by the end of it well let's say we get 10 percent of people watching by close to the end of the video so although it's showing 84,000 views now only 8.4 thousand have watched it all the way through and actually if you see what's going on you see what the lies are being told which really to get a true extent of those lies you need to be watching at, this, at least to this point there's only 20 percent of people still watching of those 84,000 at this point to, to truly know that they're being lied to you know that's only 16,000 people out of 80,000 people and this is the problem people either don't have the attention span they think that what they're listening to isn't true because oh they don't like the sound of that voice okay and therefore actually getting the information to people because they don't believe it they're not interested this is the this is the trouble that we have and this is a difficulty that I'm facing now in addition to that I put out videos and I can't control how many people view them. So uh, a couple of days ago, I put out three videos. These are the viewing figures for those videos. 5,500, 2,400, 6,000. Okay, all on the same day. Now this video, that's only got 2,489 views. Let's have a look at who likes it and who doesn't, all right? Okay, oh, sorry. Let me try and do that bit again. So, of those three videos, this one, 97.1% likes. The bottom one with 6,000, 93.8% likes. This one that's only been seen by 2,490, 89.3% likes. Well, why is the percentage lower? Well, that video exposes something that they don't really want you to hear. OK, they don't want you to hear it. And that is quite simply at the point in time where Nicholas Latifi crashes, Crofty comes on commentary and says, oh, no, Nicholas Latifi has crashed. I think that's at turn 14. And Brundle immediately says that will be a full safety car. Right. Doesn't say, oh, is Latifi going to be able to move that car out of the way is he going to be able to get that back to the pits or are we going to need a safety car to deal with this doesn't say that doesn't say that but again fewer people get exposed to that and this is part of the problem who gets to see these things that are going to help you see the full picture of the so many different aspects of this that just aren't right and for each individual one you could go oh well there's an excuse for that oh there's an excuse for that oh there's an excuse for that you're gonna have to excuse in excess of a hundred different things which are suspect to authenticate this and that many different things that you can question you, don't, you can't question that many things if an event is authentic because there's no need to question it if it's authentic doesn't happen that way so if you've not already seen it five minutes long right I'll, I'll put that one at the end of this video have a click on it listen to what's being said there the other thing to uh, note is again coming back to this list of videos that I've put out um, look at the monetization comment com column um, and this last one that I put out about Max Verstappen uh, complaining about blurred vision and feeling dizzy that YouTube 
checks the videos on upload and determines whether or not it's suitable to attach adverts to it. It found something unsuitable within that video that it thinks the people that pay it money to advertise on YouTube, they won't like that video according to YouTube. You know, advertisers don't like having their product attached to videos which are exposing the true nature of events. Attached to videos which might polarise opinion, which might make some people not like it. Because advertisers, well, they want to appeal to everybody because they want everybody to buy their stuff. Okay, they're not interested in truth. They're not interested in being associated with controversial things where some people will want things to be one way and others will want to be another. No, they want to appeal to all. And that limits the monetization. And with that, limits your audience. So that video, which got 7,000 views, will have limited ability to monetize, you know, because there'll be limited adverts shown with it on YouTube say so. Again, these are the sorts of things we're up against. As I've said before, the purpose of this channel is not for making money. As such, in that I'm not going to be taking this money that's come from this channel. That money will be going to the campaign which is going to overturn the injustice. Okay? So but the, it's it's seeking to make money for that, of course, but I'm not looking for this is not for personal gain monetarily for myself from this channel. Okay, this is to expose injustice. So I am going to come back to uh, a key point about this Verstappen not medically fit video. Um, but before I do that, I just want to expose to you something that is impacting the channel, but impacts all of us. And I want you to adjust your interactions with these people with this knowledge. Many of you will already understand the notion of trolling. Um, bots, troll farms. All right. So let's just have a look and let's just be clear about what is going on. We have people that have come to this channel and there's certainly one of them that's made uh, in the region of four, five, maybe even more thousand comments on this channel. And we've got other um people who have again subscribed to the channel and they have made close to if not in excess of a thousand comments to this channel bearing in mind there's only 400 videos so that's quite fanatical personally and like many of you normal reasonable people if we come across a channel on youtube where we don't like the videos that are being produced um i don't subscribe to those channels i don't want to offer them channels any support um and i'm not interested in watching the content i just move on by certain uh, individuals will or we will call them individuals we'll call them individuals but they will subscribe to that channel and click the notification bell so that they get notified of every video that gets uploaded by that channel for the sole intention of trolling it. That's rather strange behaviour. They troll it in a manner which then want to portray me as being a psychopath. <laughs> rather strange, really. I mean, the irony. Um, but why? Is that just rogue individuals with um, some sort of disorder that makes them want to behave that way? Or is it people seeking to shut down information? Now, when you actually look into the mechanics of this, we'll have, we'll, we'll have a look at uh, which one of these is it. Let's have a look at this one, first of all. You can check these out yourself, but let's have a look at some of this information. You're an idiot. You call yourself a journalist? Someone please put this man out of his misery. Well, these are just some of the negative comments I've received on social media in recent weeks. Yeah, and that's nothing, mate. That's nothing. 
But how do I know that they are real? That certain people actually feel that way about me? After all, this is the internet, and therefore these comments might well be written by someone other than what the profile says. Today, I want to tell you a few things about troll farms and how to spot them. This is GMF Compact. Basically, a troll farm is a group of people hired to post messages under false names. Hired! Who is receiving money for doing what you're doing? Is this what you're doing with your life? I suggest you make better life choices because you do having a damaging impact on society. You ever have a family of your own? You ever have a family of your own? The damage you are doing to society and the impact you are having, which will ultimately have a knock on effect on your children, you are responsible for. These are your life choices. The business strategy of a troll farm is a typical divide and conquer tactic. They seek to intervene in politics, elections and public debates by polarizing people and sharing deliberate misinformation while attacking those who are fighting for the truth. They are usually... Oh, that's a bit strange, isn't it? Oh, you don't have the truth. You don't listen to my truth. <laughs> right. The truth is what is evidenced. This channel presents evidence. Video footage available to you all. I've told you where to go and get it. You can watch it for yourself. You can hear it for yourself. It's going to be exactly the same footage, exactly the same information that has been presented here. I just break it down as to what is true and real as opposed to the narrative that is fed to everybody that you are encouraged to believe. That's all I'm doing. And it's really easy to do. And as soon as you start seeing it, you can do that for yourself. But we get people coming to the comment section denying that that's the truth. Weird, isn't it? It's weird. Usually financed and bankrolled by governments who hire these keyboard armies of thousands of people whose sole job is to just agitate others. Now, when I listen to that, when I hear, oh, this is financed by governments, I have difficulties in necessarily getting my head around that to believe it. However, what you've got to bear in mind is, and this is this is something that is true, is that the governments of our countries should be uh, there to manage the country in the interests of the citizens of that country. OK, all the things that go on in our lives that are essential for the uh, the functioning of our lives. Essentially, the government should be there to manage that. So manage the infrastructure for that country, for people. That's what it should be doing. What it really does is it creates policies which enable certain businesses to make lots of money from the citizens of that country. How do, why would you do that? That sounds a bit corrupt, doesn't it? Yeah, well, what happens is those businesses feed money to corrupt individuals within that government. And then that government makes policies to benefit those businesses. That's called corruption. That's the way these things work. So a narrative needs to be given to the citizens of the country to make them believe things to have to be a certain way. This is why it has to be done this way. And that's why, oh, yeah, this is just the way it is. You look at Formula One, you've got the government of Formula One, the FIA. Well, somebody has got the FIA, the government of Formula One. To create the rules to be a certain way or to break the rules in a certain way for the benefit of somebody. Can you see the same mechanics? So 
this is how you'd start, start need to look at this. Whether it's the government that are actually uh, setting up troll farms, because it could be, and why would they want to intervene in Formula One? Well, ultimately, media will give out the agenda. For example, in the UK, we've just had elections. The Conservative Party that were in rule in this country for such a period of time has been ousted, finally. In the run-up to the election, everything was still pro-Tory in much of the media. Right? Why is that? Why is the media not exposing the failings of that Conservative government in the manner that it needed to? Why is the media not exposing that that government was guilty of crime, corruption, things such as insider trading, which collapsed the British economy and has impacted the lives of the citizens of this country in such a negative manner, whilst people made billions out of that situation. How can that happen? Control of the media. Now, it could be that Liberty Media are throwing money at the situation to suppress the truth coming out, which is going to expose the fact that the business, the business that they are the commercial rights holder of, is guilty of corruption that has made them billions. So it could be that. But this is the problem. They want to suppress the truth. And this is how they're doing it. So, how can you tell whether you're reading such a fake comment and being targeted by someone working at a troll farm, or whether it's just a real person throwing around their opinion? Well, here are some questions you should ask yourself. Number one. Try to establish just how anonymous they are. Is this an old account with lots of history or was it opened last month and doesn't even have a proper profile picture? So, what I clearly could see straight away, we had one uh, troll called Aura Clan right from the beginning of this channel. That posted about 600 comments in no time. That went away and was replaced by Dolph Lundgren. And that's now posted four, five, six thousand comments. If you cancel these, they'll just come back as something else. They'll make up a new email address. They'll make up a new username. It's the way it works. Number two, you should also take a look at the language they use. Can they competently communicate about a subject they appear to be so passionate about? And if so, do they seem aggressive? Or do they give up easily? Say, like someone who might be busy trolling a dozen other accounts at the same time. <laughs> Again, honey, what do you do for money? This is what you're doing with your life. It's the same as being one of these corrupt... Well, it's not the same, but it's equivalent of being one of these corrupt call centres that cold calls people to scam them. Vile individuals, essentially criminal behaviour. But what you're doing is subverting societal values. You're suppressing truth. And truth is something that should be the only thing that we're all entitled to in this world. And you're using your existence to suppress that. That's a mark of who you are. That's a mark of who you are. Number three, do they eventually move the conversation away from attacking your original post and try to attack you personally? Try to find something that they think might be your weak spot. And finally, keep coming at me. Let's find my weak spot, trolls. Bring it on. Number four, do they try to gang up on you with others and heckle you nonstop, which is easy to do in this line of business. Troll farms... Yeah, have your little circle jerk in your little office of computers. You're loving it, aren't you? You're loving it. Enjoy this one. Enjoy this one. Because that's what we're all seeing. People will see you for what you are. Generally follow a pattern of quantity rather than quality. They cast a wide net in hopes of misleading as many people as they can on important social issues. Don't let them get under your skin. 
And if you do feel like they are singling you out and actively defaming or even threatening you, go to the police and report them and seek legal advice. Because <laughs> that'll be useful, won't it? Because the police will investigate this, won't they? Just like the UK Serious Fraud Office, a government agency that is, right, won't investigate this fraud. But troll farms, which could be government funded and government instructed, suppress the truth about the fraud. What's going on there then? What's going on? Remember that above all, they are part of a form of hybrid warfare whose ultimate enemy is freedom of speech. I'll go more to say that it's not just freedom of speech, it's, it's actual truth that they're trying to suppress. And, you know, like I say, that's the kind of individuals they are. Former Russian troll exposes misinformation operations. Let's have a quick look at this. A few brave former workers, such as Vitaly Bispelov, uh, 200 the, people. 200 people. We are most, most, most 200 people. The 26-year-old journalism grad became a troll by accident. What the oh, a journalism grad. <laughs> Wonder who that sounds like. <laughs> Putin and Trump. In late 2014, when he answered an ad at the Internet Research Agency, I figured out early that the main goal was to create a picture of the world and the Internet. This is how I picture many of you with your, um, your crusty socks. This is the trolls that I'm talking about, by the way. Net that mirrored what was being shown on Russian television. Bespelov was put on the Ukraine desk. Russia's covert support for rebels in eastern Ukraine was underway, so anything that made Ukrainian government soldiers look bad was a priority, especially stories about dead children. We saw a news story that some militiamen were hiding in the school in Donbass, and it was being shelled. Some children died. Look, you, you know where that's going to go, okay? You know where that's going to go. But this is, this is one of the dynamics of trying to expose what's really going on on social media. Mainstream media is not presenting it. This, no this notion of if there is a problem, if you have a complaint to make, you can contact the mainstream media and they will expose it. No, that doesn't happen. Why? Because there's a narrative and they will only expose what they want to expose at the time that's convenient to them. It's like the post office scandal. For those of you in the UK that have followed the post office scandal, the media was informed that the post office had get, were getting this wrong years ago. Who exposed it? None of them. Oh, but now that it's all happened, it's all come out, now they'll expose it. They could have, they could have played their role in that years and years ago. They shut up. They kept quiet. They said nothing. And this is the collective that's happening now. They're aware that it's corrupt. They will say nothing about it because that's not the narrative. Somebody's paying them enough money to give the narrative that they want, not the truth. That's how corrupt media is. These things that are, we, are, we are presented with as authentic and truthful, and they're the sorts of things that impact lives. So, again, these are the things we, we are being presented with. Now, um, that video that I was going to talk about, this one about Max Verstappen not medically fit to drive in Formula One. We have got the influx of trolls on there that want to defend Maxwell Verstappen. They want to tell me what an atrocious channel mine is and uh, it's British bias, it's this, that and the other, whatever. Well, there's a couple of things that you need to understand that people need to think, realise what, what, that's important. And maybe if you had a child of your own, you'll realise that you might think yourself as being invincible in this world. You know, you might think you can dodge a bullet. You might think that you know, if a car runs into you, it will bounce off to you, off you because you're so hard. You're used to playing computer games, aren't you? So, you know, no jeopardy. 
you know, you, you make a mistake, not a problem, just uh, start again, reset, extra life. Real life doesn't work like that. If you've got a child, you maybe would want to protect them. And let's say, for example, um, somebody goes to the opticians for an eye test and they get eye drops which dilate the pupils for a specific type of eye test and they're told by the optician they're not allowed to drive for the next couple of hours until this wears off and they can see properly again but they don't care about that you know what does the optician know what does the expert know they don't know anything they don't care about that and what the hell if Max Verstappen can drive a Formula One car at 200 miles an hour with blurred vision. They've only got to drive home for five minutes uh, and they're only going to do 30 miles an hour. So, yeah, what's the risk involved? Not a problem, is there? Well, if that person fails to see properly when in control of a motor car and runs your child over and kills your child, is there not a problem? Is there not a problem that they drove whilst being medically unfit and have caused damage? They've caused a death. Would you be outraged? Or is that okay? Should we just keep crying, should we? Ha ha, ha ha, cry more. That's just national bias. Yeah, that's because you're just a Lulu fanboy. Ha ha. Move on. You're still crying, are you? Three years later. Ha ha. Is that, is, is that your values? How about dizziness? How about concussion protocol? That's been around for quite a period now. Concussion causes dizziness. Potential for blacking out. Again, if you suffer concussion then you are, you are signed off, effectively. You're not allowed to drive for a period of time for the risks that it presents, the risk of blacking out again, the risk of that dizziness incapacitating you. You get concussed. You get told by a doctor, a medical professional, you are not allowed to drive now for 14 days. Because you're suffering with dizziness still. Oh, that doesn't mean anything. I know that Max Verstappen, well, he was dizzy and he could drive a Formula One car at 200 miles an hour and still win races. So what a load of rubbish that is. Who knows? You're driving along in your car. You're disobeying the medical orders. You suffer dizziness, you become disorientated, or you black out, you crash, you kill somebody. That could be somebody that you love. It could be your daughter's boyfriend. Just passed his test. Played a game of rugby at the weekend. Took a blow to the head. Suffered concussion. Oh, it's all right. I'm invincible. Doesn't matter. We're going out tonight. He's driving your daughter. He suffers disorientation due to his concussion. He crashes. He kills your daughter. Ha ha, ha ha, cry more, cry more. Ha ha, Lulu fanboy, British bias. Is that all you've got? Is that all you've got? When I talk about sub subverting societal values, this is what media is responsible for. And this is what you, you trolls in the troll farm and you teenage wank boys. OK, let's hear that. Let that hit you. Teenage wank boys who want to come to the comment section to present what you present. You do not understand the impact of what you are saying in life and how that can impact people's mindsets, what they believe in and what they deem to be acceptable and what is not acceptable. The FIA are this organisation that present themselves as 
in, in all in in addition to motorsport, they present themselves as promoting road safety. They present themselves as promoting road safety. And yet they are permitting a driver to be competing in motorsport who is not fit to drive. What message is that sending out? That is sub subverting societal values. That is what is happening. That is the importance of this. How many of you went to school with a person that suffered a concussion in their late teens, early 20s, and he was a decent lad, suffered a concussion, and within two weeks of that concussion, apparently, according to everything that I've been told about the situation, they determined that he blacked out, went into the back of a lorry, and died. A young life, in his late teens, early twenties. And yet we have a Formula One driver suffering dizziness, suffering blurred vision, symptoms of concussion, long-term symptoms, which make you unfit for something, and they're still doing 200 miles an hour motorsport with competitors around them, with marshals in and around that area. That's a huge risk. There's a lot of lives at stake. And who's doing again to think about it? And who's conditioning you to think that that is okay? And what's the knock-on effect? Whose lives are being protected in society through being aware of the true dangers of the impact that that sort of thing can have? on people, on innocent lives, through lack of responsibility, lack of taking responsibility for your own actions, for your own condition, for having any kind of respect for anybody else in this world and the impact that you might have. But you're still going to come to this channel and you're still going to come to this video to try and undermine me and undermine that message because you're being paid to do so. You're taking money for that purpose. And that shows you who you are. And yes, I will fight every single one of you. I will fight every single one of you. That's the scum that you are. That's the scum that you are. Uh, and yes, do you get under my skin? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. But I'll overcome you. I'll overcome you. And once this is done, if I develop the resources to track you all down and expose you, that's what's going to happen. Trust me. Right. The final thing is um, that video. You can see another fluff YouTube channel with uh, 27.3 thousand subscribers. Those of you that don't like my content because it uh, exposes some things that you don't like about your favourite, go and subscribe to this one. This is, this is more your thing. As I was saying earlier, right, personally, if I come across a YouTube channel that I don't like because I think that the content is rubbish... I don't subscribe to it. You see here, see this button here, which would be subscribe, okay? You can see that I haven't clicked that, all right? There's a reason I haven't clicked that. That's because I think that this channel is shit, right? So, I've not subscribed to it. Why would I? I don't want to spend my days listening to something that riles me up, right? And then just spend my, my hours of my day complaining in the comment section this is shit this is shit this is shit right that that's that's not what I'd, I'd prefer not to do that but you know you you might like this okay and this might be a better use of your time go and subscribe to cameron you see, I'm, I'm doing him a favor i'm promoting his channel okay 
um, and let's listen to some of his valuable insight. Maximilian Verstappen saying that during Cota, one of the best performances that you will ever see in a Formula One car, that he managed to fend off a Lewis Hamilton on fresher tyres on a chart. See, Maximilian Verstappen, one of the best performances you'll ever see. see oh, you like that, don't you? You like that. See, get yourself over to Cam. There he is. Seven time champion, goat settings with blurred vision. What are we doing here? I just don't understand. Okay, it's dangerous, but how can... Absolutely right, Cameron. It, it, it is dangerous, but how are you going to describe it? Can he do that? How can the FI allow that? To... How can he do that? It's amazing, isn't it, Cameron? It's amazing. Oh, Maximilian Verstappen. What an amazing, incredible human being persist and transpire even i don't even know what i'm talking this is bonkers here Ma absolutely right cameron you don't even know what you're talking about mate maximina verstappen continues and i quote it was like driving a speedboat at 300 kilometers per hour i've never told mind blown I told you this before but for a few laps, it was so bad that I seriously considered turning off the car. Hey, why does it say... Oh, Cam, you'd have got your bit of advertising revenue from me for this one. But let me just fast forward it for my viewers. So the adverts that they see give my channel the advertising revenue, which contributes to a good cause rather than to your pocket. Here he is again. Oh, oh. Mind blown. What? what are we doing here? Houseway? This makes no sense. <laughs> it, was, it was so bad that I seriously considered turning off the car, says Maximilian Verstappen. Cota 2021, when defending to a charging Sir Lewis Hamilton on fresher tyres, seven-time champion. Manu's face absolutely has to be on the Mount Rushmore of F1. What are we doing? The Mount Rushmore of F1. How does he do this? This is impossible things that he's talking about. This makes no sense. The only thing, continues Max Verstappen, that helped was concentrating on my breathing while Lewis was breathing down my neck. An important victory that I desperately needed in the fight for the world championship in 2021. Of course, Maximilian Verstappen is talking about Cota in 2021. This is incredible. And amongst his best... See, you might like Cameron. Okay. Yeah, lovely. Uh, what you might not like about him, because I know some of you are racist, so some of you might not like the fact that he's got brown skin. So, you know, that might irk you. It might be a bit paradoxical for you. You know, you might like what he's saying about your favourite, but you might not like the fact that he's got brown skin. So it's like, mm, do I like Cameron or do I not? Personally, I just assess whether or not the guy is coming out with decent information, whether I think he's either truthful, knowledgeable, or a man of integrity. And that's how I judge him. And I think the guy's a turd. Best victory references Barcelona 2016, Mexico 2018, 2019 Austria, 2019 Germany, 17th anniversary, 2020 Silverstone, France 21. There are dozens of them, aren't there? He's not bad, this Maximilian Verstappen fella. And listen, this is, of course, not long after Sir Lewis Hamilton has just brought it back at Silverstone. And you can't hate it. I think this is the theme of the day. Formula One excellence. Formula One excellence. And again, listen, privileged to be a Formula One fan. We're all privileged. At this, that I know the sport treats us bad and I know it doesn't respect us. I know they would invite Simone Ashley to the Grand Prix and we won't get her with. We who've been there supporting this sport on our shoulders each and every single time. It treats us bad. But keep F1 fans mean and keep the, keep them keen keep them mean right they will come back whatever that phrase is what on earth are you talking about how about you call out the things that are wrong 
you, you, you accept abuse. The sport is abusing people. It's abusing people's minds. And you're just accepting that. And you're actually party to that. Because you're perpetrating that abuse by not being able to drill down to the true construct of what's really going on. The true facts, what's really going on, you just, oh, oh, Maximilian Verstappen is just so incredible. And the sport of Formula One, we're privileged to be watching it, aren't we? Oh, they're so good. And hopefully they'll give me some free tickets for doing this. And my best mate, Peter Windsor, will help me make some money for my channel. We keep coming back each and every single time, right? And we love the bloody sport. And it is because of things like this, feats like this, of which Maximilian Verstappen speaks about. What are we talking about? How's he done that? I still... You don't know, do you, Cameron? You, you, you don't really know. But you put yourself out on YouTube. You've got yourself 27,000 subscribers. You don't know what you're talking about. But you like fluffing Max Verstappen for clicks. Rather than being able to have the ability to break down a scenario and expose what it is truly. I don't understand. Blurred vision, if that's true. And then we're going to talk about Silverstone. People want to talk about that accident. A thousand G or whatever. A thousand G. A thousand G now, is it? Well, that's increased by a factor of 20 <laughs> over what Christian Horner claimed it was. And that was likely to be an exaggeration anyway. Who was responsible? Well, it must have been Lewis. He understeered and he outbreaked himself. And then and then on the other side of the fence, well, no, it wasn't Lewis's fault. It was Max's fault. Max should know better. It's not about two sides of a fence. It's just about breaking down the situation and exposing fact. Don't need to turn everything into an argument. You just assess the situation. Say, look, this is what is going on here. You can all see. Here is the evidence for you to see. This is what happened. Now you can all see. Now there's no need for conflict. Because we can all see what's really going on. To Tyson, you're a legend, gifting out memberships proper. It's a techie one, that Silverstone thing. And I think... It's a techie one, that Silverstone thing, isn't it? And I don't really know when it comes to techie stuff. I'm far too emotionally vulnerable to broach it at this point. Depending on which side of the fence you sit, you will have a different opinion on what Maximilian Verstappen saying. Of course, he, there's no way that he could have absorbed that 500G impact. I thought it was a 1000G impact a while ago. Now it's just 500G. Was it not 51G? Because Christian Horner said it's 51G. However many times Christian Horner said it. And there not been some physical damage. Blurred vision, though. Is that really what it, what was going on at Cota? And Max Verstappen still managed to get it done. Who, well, who is this dude? Save for the avoidance of that. It makes no sense to me. That he's, he's, he's clearly Superman, isn't it? It's Super Max. That, that's who this dude is, Cameron. That's who this dude is. So if you are a Maximilian, Ma Maximilian Maxwell, whatever his name is, Maximus Verstappen fan, I recommend to you the channel that is Cameron F1. This channel is not for you. Okay, so I expect to see my number of subscribers go down now as the rats leave this ship. Okay, and then Cameron's numbers can increase. Those of you that remain... You're from a troll farm, aren't you? That's what you've chosen to do with your existence. Like I say, if there comes a time in life when you have a family of your own, if there are friends, loved ones that suffer some form of injustice, think about the role that your actions have had. And it might not be directly that same set of circumstances. But there's many different sets of circumstances that are subverted by what it is 
you are doing with your existence. So, those of you that are decent people and at least 90% of people that are subscribed to this channel that want to listen to this content are you, you, you're good people. 90% of the people we meet in life are decent people. Sadly, we are all subject to the media narrative. We're all subject to these dynamics that are going on. And we need to find a way as relatively powerless people because we don't have the ability to broadcast to the masses, OK, to get people to see what's really going on. Everybody gets presented with the same bullshit, OK, from the, ma the mainstream media. They get presented with what they want to present to us and people then just accept that as being normal. And it's not. And so those of you that are now seeing what's true need to help actually get the real message out there. All right. Get the real message out there. And you can do that by hopefully sharing my videos, the ones that you see that I put out, share them so that others get to see the truth. With it being a Grand Prix weekend, we've got the Hungarian Grand Prix this weekend. Um, a lot of the um, YouTube content will be in relation to that so i'm not going to be putting out any content directly relating to abu dhabi this weekend next week's probably going to be a busy week but i'll put out what i can but i'm going to do two videos which expose how we can show all teams were complicit with the abu dhabi fix okay there's that mashup that you've all seen where it's got this Oh, these are all the radio messages that were taking place during that last few laps of Abu Dhabi. And all the teams appear confused by what's going on and the way that that's edited to make it sound like all the teams haven't got a clue what's going on. It's all, yeah, it's, it's, it's just chaos, right? And then I'll break that down as to what's real, okay? I'll show you what's really going on at what times and they just go with it. And then the other video I'll do is just basic strategy calls showing you, given the information that we're given, what strategic calls would be the obvious ones to make, what are the right ones to make and what they do make. Anyway, thank you for your time. Please keep liking the videos. Please keep subscribing to the channel. And most importantly, please keep sharing the content. Thanks for your time. Have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you.